Oh, because Kick is coming back is a boon for Finesca Academy. Yeah. When he's in their squad, top lane damage percentage is 30% of the entire team's <laughs> damage. When he's not, it's 16. So really expect to see them pick a strong top laner for him. And that was him kind of bouncing between Maokai and Echo. So yeah. I'm looking forward. Obviously, Shen is another pick that is high priority that over in North America and in some IEM games has been first picked as well. So uh, there's a lot that can be in that first slot. Right now, we've got Camille, we've got Graves, Kha'Zix all still available with only one ban remaining. Yeah, lots of jungle priorities still on the cards here for them. Jin is there as well, yeah. as you said. I think there's there's a lot of options here for Misfits Academy and Fnatic just decide they don't want the Camille, they don't want that top lane threat into Kikis. Jisoo now with the first pick for Misfits Academy. And we've seen a couple of teams trying to contain Camille. We saw the Swain come out from Schalke last week that worked, but I like this getting it off the board. Now Misfits, we know that there's a decent jungle for jungle matchup, so I actually think Jin would be a high priority pick here if they feel confident giving it to Yuki, because you know you'll either get Graves, Kha'Zix, or Ivern right here. So you can take the AD carry, the best remaining one. This puts a little emphasis on Fnatic to look at a Sivir or a Caitlyn in this first phase of the draft, but there's no rush for them. They could pick it up here, but they get two strong picks, and we hadn't even talked yeah. about the Jace so far. Jace getting through for Kikis is so strong for them. It gives them a lot of damage in that top lane. If they want to take it there, can also rotate it to mid and have that flex option. Niski's tended to go towards the rise instead, but that has now been banned out, so we could see him on this Jace, and Lulu is locked in as well. And, and this is a pick that we've seen a lot of priority rise on recently, specifically in Challenger as well, is, is Lulu doing very well. A lot of good matchups for Lulu are available in that bottom lane, and she can get your AD carry later on through the game fairly well. So decent push comes from it. So Fnatic Academy have a good setup now for pushing in. Obviously, you can still flex the Jace available to mid if they want it. It's not quite what we've seen out of Niski, but that Rise ban undoes a lot of what Niski has wanted to do over the last few weeks. So Misfits Academy now, will we see something like a Corky come out before it could potentially get banned away in phase two? Yeah, I think if Misfits don't pick their mid laner here, Fnatic are probably going to prioritize banning out that mid laner. It's going to be Maokai. So now Fnatic actually have a couple of choices because you can go for the Shen in the top lane and have Jace as your mid laner, or you can pick up that AD carry we were talking about and avoid getting it pinned away by Misfits Academy. Well, we know that Kikis feels fairly comfortable playing Echo into the Maokai as well as another lane. So I, th I think if they go AD carry, they, that is one option. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so. the least sim pick. So not, e not any of the decisions we were talking about. This is continuing what Amazing was doing on the Fnatic lineup yeah. in the regular split before Broxa came in for that switch, where he was playing Lee Sin and Elise. Now, this has the potential to go very well for Fnatic Academy, and it's an incredibly snowball jungler, but we can see Fnatic Academy t now taking away some of the, uh, the, the more you know, defense-oriented picks coming away, like the Tom Kench being taken out off the board. And it looks like Misfits Academy are going to try and pinch that AD carry roll as well with the Caitlyn ban. I really like the Tarn pick, mostly because you talked about Kickers taking that Echo into Maokai top lane mm -hmm. matchup. And what he was able to do when he played that Echo was catch out the, the Jin every single time yep. when he opened up the Cursing Call. So now without the Tarn Kench, it allows you to catch a little bit easier onto that backline. The Thresh as well means that you remove the possibility of that Lantern to safety for the Jin. Yeah, taking away a lot of the playmaking supports from Dreams. We know obviously he's played Bard in the future, yeah, in, in the, the past. Future. <laughs> Hey, maybe, maybe time, he'll time play Time traveling stress. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Uh, at this point, like I'm looking at what Fnatic Academy have now as a first pick available to them. Ezreal is kind of a pick that you could go back to. It's not the strongest of lanes, but when you look at the AD carries that still remain, Ash would be the only other one right now at the top tier. We've seen a couple of weird things come out, like the Tristana, we saw one. And when you get this far down the AD carry pool, it starts to kind of become personal preference. I think Ash gives you that utility. That's the reason we used to see her alongside the Varus and the Jin until lethality became incredibly strong. So it is going to be the Ash pick. Gives you the arrow, gives you a bit more pick potential for Fnatic Academy. And here's where the strength of the flex chase comes in, because we now know Syndra is in the mid lane. We've got Maokai top lane, so the Fnatic Academy can pick and choose their lanes that they want. If the Karma gets locked in, it will be fairly standard against the Jin. And then we get to see, is it something like a Cassiopeia for Niski? an Oriana for the mid lane, or is he taking the Jace and it'll switch to an Echo up in the top side, or a Rumble, something that can out-damage this Maokai? I think the Jace can out-damage him as well yeah, if he, does it, if he plays the lane properly. So it's actually 
I'm not going to talk nah. about Karthus because I don't <laughs> think it's going to be a Karthus lock. Could be Cannon in the top lane for the Maokai. On hit Cannon is something we saw a lot at the start of Season 7 that sort yeah. of fell away a little bit, but still can do a lot of work. But it looks like they're going to pick the Oriana instead. And look at this composition setup where you, you have a Lulu, you have an Oriana. Everything is there to kind of protect Mr. Rales in fights as well and Kikis. And you have a ball delivery system. You have protection as soon as that Lee Sin goes in. You get the wild growth if your Ash isn't in particularly much trouble. And Fnatic Academy have a decent setup for their team fights. But on the other side, you've got to look at this. Look at the damage that comes out. Jin, Grave, Syndra, and you have the front line of Maokai. This should be a very interesting game as we get closer to it. I mean, both team compositions are actually uh, I'm fairly in favor of. I like both drafts. I think Fnatic's is a little bit more unorthodox, which is something that we've said over in the LCS yes. as well. And Fnatic haven't always had the most success with that. I think falling down to that sort of third tier AD carry pick always forces you to be a little bit more unorthodox with that Ash. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work as well as the Varus or the Jin would, uh, or the Caitlyn or even the Civ is what we tend to see in those picks. And I think a lot of people will be a little confused when we say third tier AD carry with Ash, because yep. in previous patches, Ash has been very high priority. In IEM, Ash has been played a considerable amount, but here in Europe, Ash dropped down almost completely in games. We saw Siva take over, Caitlyn take over. It was just the more favored European style. So that's why we're kind of swapping things around, yeah. saying she's a little bit lower, because in our region, that actually is the case. Well, you have to play to the meta of the region right. you're in at the time, and sometimes that's why we see you know European teams not doing as well at international stages, because they're trying to enforce a European meta, perhaps onto teams that aren't used to that sort of meta, like Flash Wolves, who play a lot more around the early game. And I think the early game here is actually really important because Pride Stalker's early game in game two of last week was incredible. Uh, game one of last week was incredibly strong on the Graves. He ended up going nine and zero in that game. If he can get the better of Amazing early on, I have to think that Misfits Academy could carry this one. Yeah, I absolutely agree. If Amazing and Kickers have their synergy together, if they can get up in that top lane, get a couple of kills, perhaps try and punish a weaker early game, and a farming style jungler that Misfits Academy have, that would be the opening that I think Fnatic Academy could really build from. Well, we are on to the Summoner's Rift for the first game of week four of the European Challenger Series Spring Split. It's Misfits Academy versus Fnatic Academy. The battle of the students. <laughs> Perhaps they're trying to become the masters. I was going to say, see if anybody can become the masters. There's a lot of... Uh, what would you call them in uh, university? You know, older students, you got yeah. Kikis, amazing. Uh, Used to be professors. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Come back around. to school. <laughs> They're doing their research at this point. You could be doing a master's degree, That's PhD. True. A PhD in killing people would be amazing Jay's, uh, amazing, <laughs> amazing Jay. Amazing X's job. I, I like it's. I, I want to bring it back to Fnatic Academy with these subs coming back in because mm -hmm. Kickers has predominantly for them, especially in EU Challenger Series, this split being a, being a carry player in the top lane. You know, he's played the Echo. Right. He was able to carry on the Maokai. He's now got his hands on this Jace and he's matching up into a Maokai who's a pretty strong, beefy top laner. Yeah. How do you play this matchup if you're Fnatic Academy? Do you focus on getting Kickers ahead? Well, at this point, I, I think you have to. Uh, Oriana needs a little extra time. Mr. Rales and Cly aren't really going to do too much in the way of having kill pressure on a Jin on a Karma without a massive mistake. Jin Karma is likely to push a, a decent amount and Ash Lulu will push it back away. So I think for me, you have to look up that top lane. Try and pull Jizu forward in the lane. Try and catch him out when he's overextending. Burn the flash and repeat gank. And if you can get that to work, that's the kind of basis that when Kikis steps up to a tower, you can get yourself ahead. Oh, Jisoo's about as far forward in the lane <laughs> as he can get at the moment. Didn't realize Kikis had snuck in behind him, and now he's going to take oh, a no. lot of damage from this Jace. Should be able to get away to the skies from Kikis going in. Grasp of the Undying will heal Jisoo back up. And you can see this early on when you've only got one uh, ability. It doesn't actually help that Maokai is passive. It doesn't proc, so you can't afford to take that trade. Maybe later on we'll see Jisoo take the same type of trade, but already two health potions burned through. Kikis has used one of his, but he's got that Doran's Blade a little bit more focused on those auto attack trades very early on. So now Jisoo has to concede a little bit of pressure and presence in that lane. Especially because Kickers can do this. With the yep. range advantage, you can <laughs> step past the minions, farm up from behind that caster minion line, and just continually harass. The Corrupting Potion being burnt is incredibly strong as well for Kickers because it's not just about getting the health from that Corrupting Potion. It's always about getting those auto attacks weaved in, getting the extra burn, tick damage down on your enemy laner. Now, if Kickers can force Jizu back into, uh, obviously, refilling his potion by recalling and then teleporting back into the lane, 
that again creates another opening. If Kikis can force him back, you have teleport advantage for a while longer. As yet, of course, Graves hasn't done anything on the map. It's a farm matchup, looking for uh, a little bit later, looking for his ultimate as well, to have that real potence on a gank where you walk into a lane, kill the enemy, and take their turret. That's what we've seen from Graves since 7.2 with all those lethality changes. But you can see Kikis just making sure that there's no sneaky attempt by Pride Stalker to come into the top side because Amazing wasn't quite close enough. And Amazing, talking about jungle pathing there, he's, he did red, he did blue, he did his uh, wolves, and now he's doing his razor beaks. Didn't really look to take Scuttle Crab vision on either side of the map, didn't really look for a gank early on here, relying more on being that farming jungler, getting up towards those later levels. So Pride Stalker now knows where Amazing is on the map because he saw the Scryers bloom. The same can be said the uh, opposite way. Now we have to look at how Misfits will react to having that information because they didn't know where Amazing was up until that point. I would expect a little bit more of a response from Yuki and Dreams, but look how heavily they're getting pushed in early on in that bottom lane. Of course, Ash with the volley, Lulu with the Glitter Lance is enough to shove a lane very, very heavily. And you can see Fnatic reacting to the fact they've got a pushing bottom lane. Niski steps forward, gets a deeper ward in, takes away the Scryer's Bloom, and tries to keep track of Pride Stalker in his jungle. And I like this because now they know there's only one place that Pride Stalker can be. He's cleared his top side jungle through already because Kick has spotted him. Now Niski knew that he wasn't on red, he wasn't on Razorbeaks. The only camp alive would be Krugs, and that's where he's going to be. So Fnatic Academy can now utilize that in the bottom lane and maybe expend that on the top side, get Amazing up into the top lane, because look how far Jizu's pushed up in the lane. And Amazing's coming in with an unorthodox gank pattern. There is a ward here. Didn't He's get not spotted, spotted on, on the one. Scuttle Crab, but he will be spotted on the ward. Jisoo now working out how he can Jisoo react to this. Pulled back in he lane. hasn't pulled back at all. Now he's starting to retreat. The Shot Blast comes in. Amazing there. Gets the Tempest slow. Kikis goes to the skies. Jisoo flashes away. Amazing's going to chase in. Lands the Sonic Wave. And Kikis gets first blood. Oh, uh, greedy from Jisoo to stay in the lane. He could have pulled back, and that would have probably saved his life. The extra second or two. You saw how Amazing and Kikis both had to flash for that kill. And that's a good read from Fnatic. Academy, knowing there was only one place for Pride Stalker to be where he was farming up, they punished Jizu. Now Jizu's going to teleport into the lane with no flash available. If Kikis sits back and Amazing comes around again, look at Amazing's pathing. He's going to do exactly the same type of thing again and Jisoo's, come to the top side. Jisoo's ward just expired as well, and he hasn't oh, yet placed no. another ward in. So Amazing actually might do a really long route here, mm -hmm. maybe trying to spot to see if Pride Stalker's in his top side jungle. He will see Kozq. He knows Pride Stalker's not here because the wolves are still up. Yeah, he knows he's not here. We'll be able to get the smite down on the wolves. Pride Stalker's going to do the opposite. But it's how does the second phase from this go? Because Jin's only level four, Karma's only level four, so the actual playmaking potential on the bottom lane isn't there either. And look, Koskyu isn't even six himself. Miski's already roamed out of the lane. They have a ball delivery system available, and they can get into the lane. Jisoo is in so much trouble here under his tower. Still a difficult dive because you do have Twisted Advance. You do have that sap magic. Kikis is going to get pushed off. There's the Twisted Advance. There's the Shockwave. There's the kill. Niski takes him down. Oh, it's all too clean from Fnatic Academy, punishing Bright Stalker from just sitting in the jungle. You can see he's 34 CS to the 28, but two assists on Fnatic and a kill going to Kikis and Niski. This is the Fnatic Academy that we started to see in week one that disappeared when they had to make roster changes. And it's what we talked about about five minutes ago. Do you snowball Kikis? Well, Fnatic have said, yes, we do. Let's get him a couple of early kills. Let's get him that phage under his belt. He still has teleport as well. Doesn't need to use that into lane. They've got a massive window now. Jisoo still only 50% of that cooldown on flashback. He's going to be so pressured in this lane, and Pride Stalker wasn't able to make any reactions out of that, wasn't able to get the Drake. His bot lane had gone back. They had no pressure on the rest of the map. Now, what Misfits Academy need to do to recover from this is they're about to reach a very important point where Syndra and Graves will have their ultimates available, and that amount of burst damage is so difficult to live through. So if you find somebody like a, a Mr. Rales or a Niski on their own and you combo everything together, you easily can compensate for kills because top lane, that's not going to be the place to do this right now. Jizu, yes, he can survive through some of these trades, but Kikis still has teleport available, can recall, heal back up, and maintain his advantage if he wants to. Fnatic using the fact they have a teleport advantage and those pushing lanes go in, get a vision ward down in the jungle of Pride Stalker. I feel this is something we're going to talk a lot about now that patch 7.3 is starting to be discovered a little bit more. 
It's jungle pathing, it's understanding pushing lanes and understanding exactly how you can spot out the enemy jungler and make him, make him as ineffective as possible. And that's exactly what Fnatic have been using to their advantage for the majority of this game is bot has been pushing in their favor, mid has been pushing in their favor, and oh look, top lane's pushing towards us and then Maokai is overextending and he has no, no flash. Instantly, Fnatic call, make the call to roam up. They make the dive happen for that second kill of the game. And Jisoo, I don't know whether he actually wants this trade here against Kikis because there's a significant amount of damage Price here. Pystalker's Stalker. here, though. He's going to try and react. Jisoo's low. He's almost getting down to minions. Tries to get the passive off. Pystalker's still facing into this. Kikis trying to get the 2v1 outplay. Misses the shot blast. Going to jump back in onto Jisoo. Ooh. Can't quite take him down. And Pride Stalker will pick up the kill. They didn't want the 1v1. They wanted the 2v1 that was coming because Pride Stalker finally came up to the top side. Fnatic trying to recover from it on the bottom side. Will get damage down on this tower. They know they have to go quickly because Graves assists that push so fast. But bot lane falls first. Fnatic will come out ahead from that because of the tower first blood. And because Pystalk has stayed up on the top side of the map, because you know Curse and Cause Down, it's a pretty safe Drake for you to yep. take as well if you want to go for it. So Cloud, not the priority for most people. Lee Sin could probably just do it by himself. It actually looks like they're pinging away from it. So deciding they don't want the Syndra possibility of coming in there, getting an Unleashed Power down. It is a Cloud Drake, so it's uh, not the highest priority. Bright Stalker finally takes down that top tower. And Niski had to move over to mid to actually defend against the push. So at this point, Kigis knew that he had the damage to trade here, but Jisoo sticks around because Pride Stalker is here. It forces Kikis back away because he doesn't want to take the point blank trade into all of these minions as well. There's already enough for Kikis to make this difficult. He tries to go aggressive. Nice twisted advance skips out on some of the damage on that exchange, and it wasn't quite enough for Kikis to actually pick up the kill. I like the reaction from Misfits Academy, punishing Kikis for being a little over aggressive. Interesting point about the gold from that top lane tower as well. Pride Stalker was left there by himself to get all of the locality, the proximity gold from taking out the tower. So they're understanding that Jisoo really isn't going to be scaling up too quickly. They want extra gold on Pride Stalker, trying to get him towards that great carry that he was in game one last week. But now Fnatic Academy, very focused on the tower game move everybody up to the top side, keep Niski in the mid lane just to defend that tower because it was weakened slightly. And now Misfits Academy are on the back foot of this play. If anybody shows in a vulnerable position top side with Yuki and Price Stalker bottom lane, that's one Ash Arrow away from a pick and Fnatic Academy would look on to mid tower. That's where they're looking now. Arrow's coming through. Good flash from Kozq. Great flash by Kozq, but Fnatic Academy can just look for the turret. They've got the double AD carry in the Jace and the Ash. Now, also quite low quite quickly. Pride Stalker and Yuki will be able to take one in response, but if Fnatic get this, it will be three towers for two. Jisoo now here on the Shock defensive. Wave. Shock wave flashed away by Jisoo. Now it's still low, they're trying to clear that wave. Jisoo is so low and Fnatic Academy will take it out. Wild Growth stops the Unleashed Power from doing anything as well. And again, overall, it's a good trade for Fnatic Academy. They just got two towers with mid tower being included in that in exchange for one. They're very effectively trading away these easier objectives on the map. They still have a kill advantage, and they've got this comp uh, composition with Jace, with an Ash, which has so much threat once you step up to Siege, because that Orianna Shockwave can come out. The Arrow can come through, and if anybody gets caught out, they have a Lulu to save them. So for Fnatic Academy, it's a good basis to be stepping in front of these towers. That's definitely what they'll be trying to do next. We talked about it a little bit in Picton Vans, you know, the pure damage output that came out from Misfits Academy. But if Fnatic out-rotate you, if they outplay the map, and they're not where you are, then it doesn't matter how much damage you have because you can't put it down on the enemy team. I'm interested now to follow Pride Stalker because Misfits Academy, they've looked good when he's done well. And haven't quite looked so great when he's been on uh, a, a jungler where he didn't get a good start. He's got one kill, has the potential to output a lot of damage in some of these skirmishes. I just want to see where he's dictating Misfits Academy's pace because they have been on the back foot this entire game. Whether it was making plays on the top tower that was just slower than Fnatic or, or the inverse on bottom side, I just feel like I want to see more from Bright Stalker. Well, Kikis is trying to get more onto Jisoo here. Knocks him away. Venture Maelstrom will keep him protected for a little bit, but this is going to be a dragon. I know Jisoo's low. Fnatic will take the Cloud Drake pretty easily. Part of it has to be jungle synergy as well, though. You know, Amazing and Kikis have played together for a long time. They understand each other very, very well. Pride Stalker's still a newish player here for mm -hmm. Misfits Academy. Only been here for a couple of weeks now. 
and just didn't have that synergy with the rest of the team early on. That's fair. And uh, I think the funny thing when you say uh, kick is and amazing is both of these players have dropped down to Challenger previously and make it all the way back up to LCS finals. Um, and it's very interesting now to see them on both on the same team. <laughs> of course, Kigis did it with G2 before G2 qualified. Amazing did it with Origin. Maybe their powers combine. Yeah, well, Fnatic needs something to bring them off that uh, <laughs> second spot at the bottom of the table. They really need to win all of their games to be guaranteed of a playoff spot. Seven points seems to be the cutoff. At the moment, they're only sitting on three. How important is it, though, when you look at those standings, at the three points they picked up in week one oh. against PSG, and they didn't match against PSG in a week where in week two or three, where they were struggling a little bit. Fnatic with a very important three points. If they continue this type of play style, where they're dominating top lane with the CS lead, they've done great map movements around the rift just to kind of put Misfits Academy behind. If they continue this, we may very well see them end on nine points if they can pick up at two two zeros in a row. Now that's running before we walk. We need to see them close out a game. But I certainly think the potential's there watching this early game. I think the big thing as well is, as we see, actually, Jisoo jumped on. Here's the arrow. Kick is going to go in. There's four members of Fnatic collapsing on the tree. And the tree manages to survive the shockwave, however, takes him down. Fnatic Academy with five in one lane, looking for the turret as well, will be forced off from this. Yeah, going to get forced away. It will... Uh, you know, be a long time until that minion wave reaches, so they can't look to push. Syndra was on the bot side. There was no real response other than that from Misfits Academy, so it's going to be a Rift Herald going over to kick. It's going to accentuate that top lane advantage for Fnatic even more. Now get that glimpse of the Void on towards your Jace, giving that extra damage in those 1v1 fights. I just want to come back to that point about the table and, you know, Fnatic Academy being able to pick up those three points. It's important to note as well, the teams ahead of them, two of the three teams who are sitting in tied second place have yet to play Schalke which at the moment, <laughs> unless you play out of your skin, and it's not something we've seen from either uh, Misfits Academy or from Millennium yet, you're not going to beat Schalke. So you're only looking at three points over the next two weeks. Yeah. It makes it Fnatic winning this game would put them in such a solid spot to try and get through to those playoffs. However, as you say, don't run before we can walk. They need to win the first game before they can look towards those three points. And considering they got perfect gamed <laughs> in week two against... Uh, Millennium. Millennium, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> certainly is a bit of a turnaround. They've got a 0-3 Maokai on the opposite side, yet to finish any items, really. So uh, no tanky frontline for now. Cosq was pushed way too far up. We saw and this happening last uh, week as well. He goes for the overpush, tries to flash away. The arrow comes down, and now here comes Cly. Whimsy will be used. Um, it won't even be used, actually. Cosq <laughs> just goes down. And Cly must have had that off cooldown. Me running before I can walk with the play there, <laughs> <laughs> thinking that uh, the Whimsy would come down. Long range snipe from Kikis to pick up another kill for themselves. Fnatic Academy makes sure mid doesn't get pushed in by Lee Sin going up there, and it's only Jizu on the top side. So if anybody recalls, you see niski has gone up there just to clear that one away. The rest of Fnatic Academy can move down in the bottom lane, look for this next inner turret. We talked about that siege earlier on. Is this the point at which Fnatic can really start to enact that, or do they still need to set up a few of their cogs, get that ball in motion? Well, with the kill, they actually can look to siege for now. Whether they get the full turret or not, I think is dependent on the poke that comes out here, because you can see Misfits Academy with the Jin, with the Karma, the Graves, have enough wave clear. Here comes a teleport play coming through. Now, Niski cannot join this fight as fast, so this could be Fnatic Academy overstepping, but that was canceled as Jizu couldn't quite close the distance. Decided he didn't want to go in just that far down. The curtain call would come out as well, but Misfits Academy, that's patience from them. It's something we haven't seen across a lot of their games. They tend to make a call and stick with it until it's done. But that was a little bit more patient from them, deciding they couldn't quite get the angles that they wanted off on the gank. And now it's a game of, of vision control and territory for Fnatic Academy. You want to try and make sure you can move between mid and bot very quickly. Uh, the Fnatic Academy aren't running a 1-3-1 one, one comp per se. They're actually a little bit more of a 4-1 where you have more of a one stack together and maybe Jace bounces between or Oriana bounces between. And that means you have to basically focus on one side of jungle control. You can't control the entire map. It means now we'll see Fnatic swap over to a few more sweepers soon, I hope, because three yellow trinkets is nice to establish a little bit longer term vision. But it's also about denying now. You can see control wards in their inventory trying to just maintain 
one half of the jungle's control. But Misfits Academy, they have enough wards dotted around on this lower side that right now they can move fairly freely throughout their jungle. Yeah, they're pretty safe for the moment. We tend to see Lee Sins especially sticking on that warding totem for a little bit longer instead of switching over to the sweeper. Amazing actually especially likes that warding totem in his inventory just for that tiny bit longer. But you could say, kick it, why don't you get a sweeper? You know, when you get a another long range totem on Mr. Rales instead, look just for a little bit more vision that you can put in and denying that vision a bit stronger as well in the enemy jungle. And that's one of the benefits that Amazing has on that tracker's knife as well, of course. We saw people start drifting back towards that on other champions, but Lee Sin basically always has that as an ability. It's the replacement for the old sight stone that you used to pick up uh, on Lee Sin. Hey, Riggle's Lantern. <laughs> Just remember <laughs> the good old Riggle's Lantern. I, I wasn't thing. going that old. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't wanting to show my age too much on that one, but... Uh, you know, this is where you kind of move in and look, Fnatic Academy will do it again. They'll move through the bot side jungle, place those control wards, place the trinkets, just get as much vision control as they can and stick as two separate packs here. You can see that Kikis requires a second person uh, from Misfits Academy to deal with. And Coscu's kind of bouncing because there's this wave going to impendingly push in the top side as well. So Fnatic Academy can't get caught mid though. Unleash power onto Niski. Doesn't quite take him down. Amazing here to tank up the curtain call. And Fnatic should be able to escape. Dreams try to get the chains down but cannot connect. And continuously Kikis just pushes in the bot lane. They knew that they weren't in any danger of actually dying. So Kikis continues his push on now, has to be careful because they don't quite spot everyone else and Kikis has to drop back in case of a teleport being necessary. This mid tower is getting pushed. I like this response out of Misfits Deadly Academy. Flourish. Is it gonna burn him with Deathfire? No, not quite enough, but they do get the tower down and this is Misfits answering back. They say, Fnatic, you can siege, but without Kikis, you don't have a lot of your damage and if we can catch you out, we can push back and take objectives. It's a good response. Like, I mean, Fnatic Academy, could have used the teleport from Kikis if they wanted to take that fight, but clearly they were more focused on just pushing the objectives, which I think is the better option. But that's Misfits Academy saying, okay, well, if you're gonna be greedy in response to your summoners, we will punish that by taking down a tower. Fnatic Academy do get themselves a Cloud Drake, which makes some of their movements from mid to bot or vice versa from the lanes a little bit easier. And now Kikis wants to try and fight, but they don't have a read. I think they just saw CosQ heading through the jungle. They want to back themselves away, not trying to overextend on the fight. Yeah, only really have one deep ward in the Misfits jungle there, which makes it very tricky for them to fully engage. And Clay and Misurales were collapsed upon in mid lane as well. You talked, we talked about it a little bit earlier, you know, vision control in the enemy jungle is vital for Fnatic at this point. And in all, all, in all honesty, it's a little bit weak. We saw Niski pushing up top lane without any vision. There's only one ward down in that bottom side. It looks like Amazing is trying to get a little bit more there now, but Baron control is all actually in favor of Misfits. And naturally, this is because of how the pace of the game and the timing in the game actually has influenced things as Kick is. Looking for a solo kill. <laughs> Does spot Pride Stalker moving down. To revisit that point, Fnatic Academy have only now just established vi uh, Baron vision control. We're only barely past 20 minutes. So for them previously, their focus was on objectives. There was no real way if they committed everything bot side for Misfits to get anything top. Yeah. Misfits had to play defensively and that's why there was no Baron vision. You're gonna see it kind of trickle down from Baron all the way through to the bot side as best as they can. And then Fnatic Academy will look here. I don't think that they can kill Jizu on this. It's more about the threat of the dive. Kikis had no mana as well. Don't really want to do that. Nik Niski caught out though. He's just going to get ah. melted away by Coscu. An overstep by Niski there. And the curtain call rains down once again. Clyde dodging around. But Jisoo is on the flank. Twisted advance onto the Lulu. That tasted purple, she says. Knocked up as well, but kicked back by Amazing. Not quite able to connect with the deadly flourish. Fnatic Academy get out while only losing one. And they're going to get bot tower in response. So net gain goes to Fnatic on the objective game once again. They will continue this play and swap it up to the top side and mid lane and focus their vision up there. Misfits Academy do not have enough time to take the Baron buff alone because Kikis will come to the Baron pit. We've seen disastrous things happen when you start Baron against a Jace. So Misfits are just going to secure vision from that and they continue to fall further behind off these plays. However, Niski has to stop getting caught like that. It's so easy for Karma, Jin, Syndra to get those pickoffs in the mid lane if you do not flash it and Niski couldn't get away in time.
Only a 3,000 gold lead for Fnatic Academy. There are turrets and two Cloud Drakes up. Let's see again how Niski was caught out. It's pretty cookie cutter here for Misfits. Yep. As soon as one piece of CC lands, in goes another, and <laughs> suddenly you're not living anymore after the Unleashed Power comes through. So for Fnatic Academy, that's a little bit of an overstay. Um, they had to use a fair amount to get out of this, but it actually ends up being okay because Kikis takes the bot tower in the same exchange. Now you'd expect Kikis to uh, perhaps swap up to top side, but staying bot means they're gonna try the same type of play and look for mid tower pressure with bot in hip tower as well at the same time. Both teleports are available. The problem is if Niski steps forward, he doesn't have that protective line of which we were talking. He doesn't have Lee Sin, he doesn't have the Lulu there, he doesn't have the Ash there to follow up with any damage if he gets caught out. So now it makes it a lot more difficult for Fnatic Academy knowing that Niski might get caught out. And the other piece of itemization that a Misfits to defend against any counter picks is two Edge of Knights. It means that that Ash Arrow is suddenly a lot more difficult because whether it's Graves or Jin stepping up to the wave to clear, you pop Edge of Knight, you don't have any threat under that for the entire duration, and then you step back for the next wave. And, and just to remember, we're on 7-3 as a patch. Edge of Night has not been adjusted as it is on live, so it is still 10 seconds and 30 second cooldown. Amazing shielded up. I think Niski got the blue buff there, so he'll be happy with that, denying it away from CosQ. I just want to come back to Niski, actually. Before that overstep, he looked a lot better this game than he has in some of his previous mm -hmm. ones. Uh, up until now, he's been playing a lot of Rise and really hasn't had a big impact in the game. In fact, he had the lowest damage per minute of any mid laner at uh, only just more than people like Sprattle and Vanda from the support role. So even though Zyra's Karma picks were doing more damage than him at times. Yeah, and now Fnatic want to use some of the damage that Niski has to go for the Baron here. One blue trinket is available for Yuki, but he's there so far comes. away. There it is. It's too late. It's just gone. It's already gone. Great call there from Fnatic Academy. They talked about it earlier. Three minutes ago, they denied vision around that. We never saw Misfits able to step up and regain the vision, which just allowed Fnatic Academy to take away the Baron, and now Kikis is even more empowered to go for that split push roll. Fnatic have basically gone for like full damage items, yeah. Rabbit and second item on Orianna, as a lot of people do, and then a Bloodthirster on Kikis, so they just walk up to the Baron, press hypercharge, and between all of their damage, Baron just dies incredibly quickly. And Fnatic Academy are in a much better spot now. Here they go with the top side push. Kikis is up here looking for that top inner while the rest of the team step towards mid lane. The Ash Arrow is there. There is a redemption for Fnatic if they start getting a little chip down under this tower. And Fnatic Academy have the threat here. Now is where you start stepping up with that ball delivery system and Misfits have to just concede and back away. See how this Baron power play actually goes for Fnatic Academy because it seems to be one of their main win conditions. Having the split push on Kikis, having the Oriana there with the threat because otherwise there's good wave clear from the rest of Misfits. You've got Graves, Jin can wave clear relatively well, Karma can delay waves, Syndra clears pretty well. So unless you're able to get empowered minions close enough, unless you're able to get up towards these turrets, you won't take them down. Yeah, exactly. Kikis now wants to step up to the tower and <laughs> you can see- Two towers. This is the actual uh, reason for that Bloodthirsty is now he knows he can out-trade Jizu fairly effectively. Now, can he out-trade as well? Unleashed power comes down, knocked back as well, and he's gonna get taken out. Fnatic Academy don't really react across the rest of the map as well. They lose their split pusher, they're gonna go for their third Cloud Drake of the game. That's all right, gotta go fast. <laughs> Well, it will help them transitioning between lanes. So what happened there is mid tower died, top tower died, and Kikis was a little slow on backing away. And because the tower had only just died on mid, you don't have that really deep vision that's right around the, the walkways between the inhibitor towers as well. So Misfits Academy had an easy translation up to the top side, go and pick off Kikis. Uh, and suddenly they can actually punish ever so slightly. It's not enough to get them back in the game right now, but that's one of the influences on those towers falling at the same time and not actually having that vision control established. Well, Fnatic have extended that gold lead to about 6,000 now. They still have the Baron buff remaining on a few of their members, well, four out of the five. Jisoo's gonna, Niski's actually gonna step into Jisoo. I <laughs> think he walked around the corner and realized there's, there's a massive tree dressed as a cat. Decides he doesn't want any of that. He yeah, backs well, away. that one's not one that Niski really wants to take a <laughs> trade on. Although it is only a Maokai. Maokai does have a fair amount of damage with that Sunfire Cape as well. On top of that, every time you're just standing around him, the Burning Bush is kind of just <laughs> chunking through your health. So Niski, now he's got a Lulu alongside him. will be able to push through the bot lane. 
kick is back up to the top lane. We have still got about a, maybe 45 seconds of Baron maximum left, but Fnatic Academy have done good damage so far. It's not enough to win the game for them yet. I want to come back to the point about this split push as well, because and the item and the itemization alongside it, because you've got a lot of aggressive itemization that you're talking about. You know, Bloodthirster, Black Cleaver, Last Whisper, uh, Lord Dominic's now finished. You've got the Rabadons. Fnatic Academy are very squishy if mm -hmm. they're not with their protective carries. Like, if Kickers gets caught out, he's going to melt pretty quickly. He's going to TP to the bot side for now, though. Keeping that cannon minion alive and now sends out the poke. It's not exactly the strongest push, though, for Fnatic. They just use TP. They don't have a second lane of push now in their favor. So Fnatic Academy tried to just get a little extra at the end of that phase and couldn't get too much. And again, I want to revisit that itemization because Kikis, this is a different build from what we've seen most Jaces. Yeah. Most Jaces have looked for that lethality build where we've seen whether it's Ghostblade, you know, whether it's uh, some combination of Edge of Night and that aspect that we've seen out of Jace on 7.3. Blood this is the second item purely to be able to uh, sustain through the trades. I think against the Malko it makes a yeah. lot of sense because Malko has inherent sustain with that sap magic. So now he says, okay, well, you sustain, I'll sustain as well off all of these <laughs> yeah. auto attacks I'm putting down. <laughs> Gets a nice shield as well, allows him to survive through anything like a Coscu ultimate, Ooh. but through goes the arrow. Misses everybody. Doesn't quite hit Jizu through the base either. <laughs> but Fnatic Academy have been a little stalled out in the sense that Baron buff is expired. They didn't get an inhibitor, which means they can't just, you know, passively push through. A couple of important things being picked up as well. QSS comes out for Mr. Riles just in case he gets locked down by Cars Q or Yuki. By anyone, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> Jisoo can lock him down. Dreams can lock him down. There's a lot of CC on this Misfits Academy squad. And Jisoo's starting to get up towards those tankier stats as well. He's built a lot of armor for himself, which means he won't be too effective in fights, although he's going up towards a Spirit Visage now. Sunfire Cape, Frozen Heart, and the Ninja Tabi under his belt. And the amount of crowd control you're talking about is exactly why there's three Mercury Treads on uh, Fnatic Academy's top half of the map. So just don't want to get locked out. Uh, it's become fairly commonplace on a lot of mid laners as uh, we're going to see a mid laner get caught out here as Koscu, but they turn on Brightstalker because Dreams is here. Amazing, does have oh the blast no. go and he does it oh. in spot and has to flash away. Unleash power won't take him down. So it, was, uh, it wasn't actually amazing that hit that. That was... Cly almost trying to lend a helping oh, hand. Trying to help. Because Amazing had been stunned, and it was at the right spot, but I think the communication must have been a little off there because Cly was like, here, let me help you. And Amazing took a step back, and it oh. actually didn't blast him over the wall. Nice little attempt. Cly, he's trying to save uh, the, the new jungler. The new old Fnatic jungler. Academy. Yeah. But um, part of that is synergy as well, and we talked about it a lot. This is the point <laughs> of the game, really, where communication and the ability to instinctually react to your team is incredibly important for Fnatic Academy because they are playing this complex style of having a split push and having a siege somewhere else. They are, and the complexity of it was nearly uh, kind of compounded upon as Kigis was moving up. Koscu was dropping down through the jungle, but Kigis, knowing he didn't have full vision, drops back in the lane, doesn't get caught out. And that's enough for Fnatic Academy now to look back up to the top side because Kikis can now maintain his presence. He's put a, a control ward down in the jungle. You just saw amazing ward for him as well. And Misfits Academy, there's two versus three for now. The rest of the team's coming. Deadly Flourish does connect onto amazing, but he'll get away. And it's just that it's a vision game at the moment. And, and this could quite easily be seen both as Fnatic Academy delaying the game for mm -hmm. themselves because they want Baron and Misfits delaying the game because they're able to just wave clear. Fnatic Academy right now are just baiting. Gets the flash from Cars Q. They're baiting because they know Kikis will eventually get this bot tower. He has a two level advantage on Jizu and can just push down thanks to that Lord Dominix. So he's just going to work on bot tower while Fnatic Academy maintain vision control on the top side. And if ever Misfits Academy commit anybody else down to the bottom side, they turn and start the Baron. And it's that decision that they have between themselves. You can see now, this is what Misfits Academy can see. They have no idea. One blue trinket is available for them. They will use it, but will they get caught? Fnatic Academy had started up the Baron. Amazing wasn't there, nor was Kikis, so that's quite a bit of damage that they were missing. Teleport in by Jisoo. There's no teleport for Kikis, so Misfits might actually just go for this well, one. It, it means Fnatic Academy can take yeah. the tower and get to the Baron. But they haven't like, got they'll a teleport. Get in here. 
This is a 4v5 fight at Baron, and Misfits Academy wants it. They've started up the Baron, and Fnatic trying to react. He's amazing. He's landed Sonic Wave onto Dreams. Baron down to 7,000. This is so slow. Shockwave Kickers is up. It's going to take the inhibitor. Careful. They've got Shockwave, as you say. Koskyu, no flash. Amazing. Separates off towards the side. Inhibitor down as Kikis takes it out. Rales, unleash power onto him. Misfits are going to chase away Fnatic Academy. The curtain call comes down, but Koskyu gets jumped on. Kly's dead. Misfits Academy have disengaged from Baron. Yuki kicks him in. Kikis is on the... Nexus turrets! Amazing's gonna die, but Kikis is gonna get two Nexus towers out of this, and if they can delay the backs, he might even get the Nexus. I think he's decided Rallis against did it. did delay two of the backs at least. Yeah, he's gonna Kikis go for is gonna back to tower as well. I inevitably, Fnatic Academy got the better trade just purely from having a hypercharged Jace sitting in the base. That's four towers Kikis just secured, one inhibitor, and two of those towers were Nexus Towers. That Nexus is now exposed with a teleport available out of Fnatic, and they did not give away the Baron. Misfits Academy are going to try and rush it down while they've got 17 seconds left on Amazing, but Kikis, Rales, and Kly are still alive, and this Baron with a Maokai and a Karma is not dying fast enough for this. Kikis has already TP'd in. Now you're doing Baron against the Jace. Arrow's up as well. Dreams caught out. Here's the shot blast. Dreams is low. Kikis looking for the engage. Gets the kill. He's still got GA. Baron down low. Pride Stalker's going to get taken out by Mr. Rales, though. And now here comes Kikis. He's going to get distracted off towards the side. Yuki kills him, but Baron not taken for Misfit. It's become very messy, but again, it feels so frustrating to say it. Every trade is going in the way of Fnatic Academy, whether it's a composed trade early on, like the kills and like the tower trades where they were getting two for ones, it was well worked, or now where it's just in the moment decision making, taking the inhibitor, taking the Nexus turrets, taking the trade at Baron and trying to get a second inhibitor for yourself now. Yuki is going to try and look for it. Here comes the redemption to keep him alive for a moment longer. Why is dead Jisoo in there as well. The shockwave used by Niski. They won't get the inhibitor. They have got super minions pushing in the bot lane though, and there's an Ocean Drake on the card if Fnatic Academy want this. We've seen one mediocre Baron power play from Fnatic earlier on. That Baron power play just earlier <laughs> on worked out a lot better for them, even though they didn't get the big purple work. Fnatic Academy need to just chill <laughs> for just a moment. They need to just calm down. They don't need to end the game in the next minute and a half. Like, you're not in that much of a rush. Get Kly back, get Kigis back, reestablish vision control, and just make sure Misfits Academy aren't making Baron plays right now because they can't afford to. Kigis, this is maybe a little aggressive to come in on a 3v4 here. They do take down Pride Stalker and ensure that uh, Misfits Academy cannot take the Baron, but it's scrappy, it's messy, it's not clean and composed, and that's what we want to see from some of the teams that are looking to try and make it into the LCS. The thing about this whole series of events as well has been, it was Misfits making a little bit of a misplay, going for the Baron in the 5v4, allowing Kickers just to push in, and Misfits in the back of their mind the entire time they were doing that Baron would have been Kickers is taking our base, Kickers yeah. is taking our base, Kickers is taking our base, okay we've lost an inhibitor, can we sacrifice more? We kind of have to now because we can't get back into Time because we haven't taken anyone down. Fnatic, are, they're playing this game well, and Kickers has really shown up, as has Amazing, in all honesty. He's done exactly what he needed to do. But you can't be reliant on the enemy team making mistakes for you to win games, and that has, at the moment, been what Fnatic Academy have done. To some extent, yeah. I think in the early game, they were making plays themselves. Now, Amazing wants to make plays. Shockwave onto Pride Stalker. He's dead. They set up around the Baron and, nicely. And here's where Kikis basically ends this game on his own. Yeah. Because Fnatic Academy will take Baron right now. There is no enemy smite. Koskyu is the only one there to defend in the base. Which means Kikis just walks in and takes the inhibitor. Or Fnatic Academy utilize the arrow, hit Jisoo, and just look to end it now. Amazing jumps back in. Kikis there, shredding through the armor. The Black Cleaver doing work. Jisoo tries to engage but can't get in. Kai survives as well. Now it's a 3v5. Fnatic Academy smell blood in the water. They want this win against Misfits. They're going to look for the inhibitor. Kickers jumps in onto Koscu. Doesn't quite connect. They will get the inhibitor, though. And now Fnatic Academy smell that Nexus. They want it. Dreams caught out by Amazing. They're just going to go for the Nexus kill. Dreams goes low. Killed. Niski takes him down. The Fnatic will get the Nexus as well and go 1-0 up over Misfits Academy. <laughs> it was such a convincing end to the game. The Victory music started playing early on that one because <laughs> Fnatic Academy, that was the Fnatic Academy we saw in week one. Different yeah. jungler now, again, but that was the strength of Fnatic Academy that we saw. Maybe a little 
kind of overconfident, a little over aggressive, but you can't really begrudge them that when you're winning from the top side so convincingly. I think that's the kickest kind of motto, though, isn't it? <laughs> like when he's winning, it's like, yeah, we'll go in, we'll see what happens. But I, I, I realized in the game I said that you can't rely on your enemy team's mistakes. What Fnatic Academy did well there was they forced mistakes out of mm -hmm. Misfits Academy, which is great play by them. It's a forced error, and if you can capitalize on that, then you're playing the map properly. Yeah, you can, and, and Kigis didn't look like he'd missed a beat. Discharged from hospital this morning, walks out, he's like, I got a week of punishment to deliver. <laughs> Comes into the top lane, gets two ganks early, ends up doing very well on the chase, um, which I'm glad to see in the sense that you know, we were wondering, Kigis, when they didn't have Bruxa, had a, a rough week, and then now you bring in Amazing, they have the synergy, and they punish those mistakes. Jizu pushing up in the top lane was the biggest one of them early on, and that's what started the Fnatic Academy snowball. Pozku consistently getting caught out for Misfits Academy as well, and if you're looking at it from their side, you have to wonder exactly how you react to this. You can't just ban out Kikis from all top lane carries. How do you change your gameplay? I think the problem is when you lock in a Maokai that early on in the draft, you basically go, okay, you play anything, uh, and please don't snowball early because <laughs> I really want to be able to tank up in fights. So I think that's one adjustment they can make. But we know it's dangerous to give Kikis the Maokai because yeah. he looks like a carry in Challenger on it. So uh, it's difficult. I I'm looking now onto this next draft to see whether Misfits Academy can offset some of what Fnatic gave us in the last game. But I think it's a difficult one. There was a lot of moments where Fnatic Academy just looked like they were outclassing Misfits Academy. And Misfits, when they play well, work really well around team fights. They work really well around Baron Bates and structure around that. So I'd like to see them playing a little bit more around that. But like Warwick, we have an eternal hunger for League of Legends. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll be back with game two of the Battle of the Academies. Don't go anywhere. Beat the Shot Blast comes in. Amazing there. Gets the Tempest slow. Kikis goes to the skies. Jisoo flashes away. Amazing's going to chase in. Lands the Sonic Wave. And Kikis gets first blood. Uh, now, can he outrate Koskyu as well? Unleashed Power comes down. Knocked back as well. And he's going to get taken out. Amazing does have the oh, Blast no. code. He does it oh. in spot. Has to flash away. Unleashed Power won't take him down. Amazing so separates off towards the side. Inhibitor down as Kikis takes it out. Rales, Unleashed Power onto him. Misfits are going to chase away Fnatic Academy. The Curtain Call comes down. But Koskyu gets jumped on. Clyde's dead. And Misfits Academy have disengaged from Baron. Yuki kicks him in. Kikis is on the Nexus turret. Amazing is going to die, but Kikis is going to get two Nexus towers out. Dreams caught out by Amazing. They're just going to go for the Nexus.